In this video we're going to look at a text table and go through these five tasks. So the first thing we're going to do is determine whether this is a linear function and um, I'll just quickly uh, describe what this is to begin with anyway. This is the a, a text table for a married couple filing jointly in 2013. <coughs> if their taxable income is this number, then their tax owed is this number. If their taxable income is this number, then they owe this amount of tax, right? Okay, so the first thing we've got to do is figure out whether this function is linear. So please press pause and see if you can do that, and then I'll do it. Okay, I hope you've pressed pause and tried it. I'm going to go over it now. So, to figure out whether it's linear, we need to get the average growth rate. And the average growth rate is equal to what divided by what? Do you remember? The change of something over the change of something else. change of the outputs over the change of inputs. The change of this column over the divided by the changes in this column. Okay, That will give you your average growth rate, how, how, how fast it's growing or, or decreasing. It could be also it could have a negative growth rate, it could be decreasing. This of course it's increasing. But anyway, um, uh, so Let's do that. Calculate the change of inputs here and the change of outputs. 72,500 to 72,700 is what change? It's $200 more, right? What about this one? 12,660 to 12,710 is how much more? Of course, you can subtract if you want. You can just get a calculator and subtract if you want to do that. 12710 minus 12660, press enter, that's $50 more, right? So this is an increase of $50. Then we've got 72,700 to 72,900 is an increase of $200. And this number to this number is an increase of 50, right? So get the changes for these. So from here to here, that's an increase of 200, isn't it? And from here to here is another increase of $50. This number to this number, increase of 200. This number to this number, increase of 50. Okay. So we have the changes of inputs and the changes of outputs. And in each case, like if we start with this, the, the growth rate here, the average growth rate is 50 over 200. Okay. Plug that in your calculator, what do you get? 50 divided by 200, 0 0.25 as a decimal, right? And the same for all the rest, 50, they're all 50 over 200, right? So the growth rate for each line is 50 over 200, which of course is equal to 0 0.25. So we have found that the growth rate is the same for for the whole table. So what does that mean? What type of function do we have? So the average growth rate for throughout the table is 0 0.25. So what can we say about the function? We've got a constant growth rate. The growth rate is the same throughout which means that this is a linear function. Okay. So that's a linear function, we know that much. And um, one thing I'd like you to do, what we're going to do is just really quickly graph this because I want to show you that the average growth rate is the same as the slope. That's the important thing thing we need important thing we need to touch on so we'll quick as we can we'll graph that so by all means hurry up I mean what goes on the horizontal axis 
what goes on the vertical axis and you can press pause and do it if you like but I'll go through it uh, you know slowly I guess so the inputs always go down here right and whatever's on the right column always goes on the vertical axis the output right so on the horizontal axis we'll put the taxable income and on the vertical axis we'll put the tax owed okay so income here tax here right So, on the horizontal axis, we've got 72,500, and then we've got five numbers. So, every four, maybe, I'll just skip. So, 72,700, and then I got 72,900, then I've got 73,100. Then I've got uh, 73,300, right? And on the vertical axis, I've got these numbers 12,660. So I'm just going to put 12,660 right here. 12,660. And then I'll go up, uh, I don't know, every, every two, say, should, should be enough. Then I have uh, 12,710, 12,760, 12,810, 12,860, right? So the first point is going to be income, 72,500, output 12,660, that goes here. The next point, 72,700, output 12,710, that goes here and so on, right? So if we make all the points, so go ahead and make all the uh, the uh, ordered pairs of those those dots, points on the graph, and they should be in a perfectly straight line, which shows that you have what type of function? What type of function is this if all the data graphs to be a straight line? What type of function is that? A linear function. It graphs to be a straight line. That's a linear function, right? Now, um, what I want to there's two things I want to do. Um, first of all, I just want to show that show you that the slope of this line is the average growth rate. That they're the same thing. You might remember from an algebra class that slope is equal to something over something. Do you remember th what that was? Slope equals da 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 da. Remember? Slope equals rise over run. You gotta remember rise over run. What does slope equal? It equals the rise over the run. Okay? So, what we're gonna do is take any of these two points, like I could take... So, well, if I just take this point here, that's at 73,100, right? And this point here is at 73,300. So if I want, I can go from this point to this point along the line diagonally, or you might remember from algebra, sometimes you like to go across like that and stop here, right underneath it. See that? Now, how far did I go across horizontally? I went. 73,100 to 73,300. I went $200 across, didn't I? That was the length, 200. And then sometimes you might, after here, you might like to go up. Now, when I went up, how far did I go up? Well, this point here was at 12,810, and I went up to 12,860. That's up how far? That's up 50, right? Now, so the run is like running along the ground. You run along the ground, don't you? The, which is which is flat. It's horizontal. Okay. This is the run. The run is the 200. See that? Remember that from algebra? 
and rise is when a balloon goes up into the air it rises up so when you rise you go up you don't run up a wall now do you so anyway joke so you run along this way then you stop and then you rise up and that's how you get the slope and then you put the rise which is 50 the rise is 50 over the run and that's what slope is it's rise over run okay and of course as a decimal that's 0 0.25 right but what it means is for every extra two hundred dollars in income for every extra two hundred dollars in income our tax goes up by fifty right does that make sense and um, and there we have it so that is the slope as you can see is the average growth rate they're the same thing so we can say that the average growth rate equals the slope okay so I hope I've, I hope you understand now that the slope and the average growth rate are in fact the same thing the next thing I want you to think about and to try and figure out is what is the meaning of the average growth rate what does the average growth rate mean if you could write a sentence to describe this 0 0.25 what does it mean think of it in your own words press pause think about what this uh, 0 0.25 number means in the context of the problem we have like this is your income this is your tax what does 0 0.25 mean so what does the average growth rate mean so press pause think about it maybe write something down or just say something out loud or say something in your head whatever and then play the video again and see see we'll talk about it together okay I hope you press pause and try that now so I'm gonna offer this um, I'm going to offer this um, su suggestion that 0 0.25, 0 0.25, you see, the average growth rate is okay. Where am I going to put this? Okay, the 0 0.25 average growth rate, okay, can also be written 25 out of 100, right? So one way you could describe it is you could say for every extra, well, we know that for every extra $200 earned, there's $50 extra in, in tax. Well, for every hundred dollars earned extra, there's twenty-five dollars owed in tax. Does that make sense? And in fact, for every extra hundred cents earned, there's twenty-five cents due in tax. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Ha ha ha! Right? Does that does that make sense? That so, in other words. For every extra dollar you earn, how much money do you pay in tax under this on this table? You pay twenty-five cents, right? So that that would be in the book or whatever. That's how they would describe this average growth rate. Uh, and and other descriptions are also correct. It's just that they they usually like to describe uh, twenty-five cents of the dollar. You hear them talking on uh, Wall Street Journal and stuff. Oh, the, how much money on the dollar? Many cents on the dollar, right? Okay. So the mean I'll put down is there's an extra 25 cents um, due or owed in taxes for every extra dollar earned. at this level right or every extra dollar gained so um, anyway so that's what the average growth rate means okay now there's another thing I wanted to say about the average this 0 0.25 and we keep focusing on it but 0 0.25 is gonna tell you it is uh, what I want you to do is write this as a percentage okay what is 0 0.25 as a percent? It is. It's 25 over 100, right? Which is 25 percent, right? It's 25 percent, right? So this 25 percent is also called the marginal tax rate. What does that mean? It means if you're married, 
filing jointly, and you earn over seventy-two and a half thousand dollars, you're going to be charged twenty-five percent tax on your income. That's over this amount, right? And that's called the marginal tax rate. Let me show you some other tax rates, just so you get the, the bigger picture. Okay, let's look at this. If you're married filing jointly, and you earn, you know, on the money, the taxable income that you earn from zero to this. Now this is, taxable income means, like, you know, you have deductions and everything else. If you have kids, you have deductions, and, and, and if you gave to charity, you deduct that and you have a living deduction. So the taxable income for a lot of people, they don't even pay federal taxes because they don't uh, get enough money to even make that. So, so that happens too. But your taxable income, it's if, you, if your taxable income is under $17,850, this is 2013, um, you pay 10% on anything earned under this level, right? And then between the seventeen thousand and seventy two and a half thousand you pay fifteen percent, right? Taxes on anything between here and here. From seventy two and a half thousand to hundred and forty six thousand you pay twenty five percent tax. That's the one we're looking at in this example, right? So these are marginal tax rates. All of these are, are um the, I'll put down here. Marginal tax rates. All of these, okay? If you earn over $146,000, from $146,000 to $223,000, this amount of your income, you're going to pay 28% on that. Okay? If you um, earn from $223,000 to $398,000, you're going to pay 33% on that. So that's a different marginal tax. So on your higher levels of income, you pay higher tax rates, so to speak. And all of these are, are marginal tax rates. Does that make sense? So, um, and you know, don't worry about people paying high taxes up here, in my opinion, because I mean, a lot of it is just kind of, you know, money on the stock market. It's not like they're actually cleaning toilets 24-7 or, you know, anyway, just a little joke. But, uh, yeah, and you know, you, you're always given plenty of money to live off. But anyway, and of course, there's a different filing status for single. If you're single, um, uh, let's have a look. 36,250, okay? This uh, this is the amount. If you anything over this, you pay twenty five percent on. But if you're married, filed, and jointly, anything over this, you pay twenty five percent on. Now, does that mean that that it's not fair? Let's take a look. Why don't you take thirty six thousand two hundred and fifty multiplied by two? Thirty six two fifty multiplied by two. What does that give you? Seventy two thousand five hundred. Right. So it's exactly fair, really. Married filing jointly and single file like if if the, if both if the husband and wife or or or, or the, the two spouses whoever they are if they both filed singly they'd end up paying the same amount of tax anyway okay but there's there'd just be two separate forms instead of one form so that's pretty much the only difference anyway let's not diver the diverge any any further so back to this kind of you know question the next thing we're wanting to do is to so we've graphed it, we've explained that the slope is the same as the average growth rate, that's good. Now what I want to do is find a formula, because you may have a question on your homework that, that goes something like this. Um, find a formula to do with your taxable income over, and I'll write this down, taxable, you're going to look at your taxable income that's over 72,500, okay? and then you're going to look at the tax owed okay so this is not the same thing as just your taxable income so watch out for that and you're going to come up with a formula with this and this in it now there's a couple of ways of coming up with this and by all means you can press pause and try it I'm just going to just uh, walk through it so if we call this taxable income over this amount we'll call that like a letter A or whatever and call tax letter T um, th there's a couple of ways of figuring out a formula for this in other words and, and again what you're trying to say is well the, if the tax is what in terms of the taxable income over that amount right well let's start if your taxable income over this amount is zero in other words if you earn that exact amount what's your tax
it's the 12,660, right? Does that make sense? If your taxable income is um, one dollar over seventy-two thousand five hundred. In other words, if your so this is where your income is in fact this one is where your income is at, in fact seventy-two thousand five hundred, right? This is where your income is in fact seventy-two thousand five hundred and one, right? So if you're one dollar over, you've got to pay. Of course, you got to pay the. 12,660 right plus what remember what does the average growth rate mean there's an extra what you there's an extra 25 cents you in taxes for every extra dollar earned so if you earn an extra dollar if you earn 72,501 dollars you're going to pay the 12,660 plus what 0 0.25 plus 25 cents, right? That's 12,660.25, right? If you earn $2 extra over the 72,500, what will your... So in other words, if you earn $72,502 taxable income, what will your tax be? Well, it'll be the 12,660, of course, plus what? 25 cents for each extra dollar earned, right? So it's going to be 25 cents plus another 25 cents, which is 50 cents, or 25 cents times 2, right? Which is 50 cents, so that'll be $12,660.50, right? If you earn three dollars more, what's your tax? Write it down. And then see if you can figure out if you earn X dollars more, what would your tax be? Press pause and try them yourself. Okay. If you earn I'll do it now. I hope you press pause and try it. If you earn seventy two thousand five hundred and three dollars, that's three dollars more than this number you would pay twelve thousand six hundred and sixty dollars plus twenty five cents on extra on every extra dollar so zero point two five times three which is seventy five cents right extra so you'd, you'd pay of course twelve thousand six hundred and sixty dollars and seventy five cents if you earned x dollars more than seventy two thousand five hundred you would pay what now, I want you to see a pattern here. Two, two, three, three. See the pattern? So, if the number is X, where does that go? 12,660 plus 0 0.25 times what? Times X. That's the formula. And that does indeed work. And I'll show you. I'll give you one example as to why. Let's let's take this number here, seventy-two thousand nine hundred. Okay. That is definitely four hundred dollars more than here, isn't it? It's four hundred more. So if I earned seventy-two thousand nine hundred dollars, that would be that would be four hundred dollars more than 72,500 and my tax would be and let's try the formula see if it works 12,660 plus 0 0.25 times 400 does that work put that in the calculator plus 0 0.25 times 400 12,760 right does that match the table? If you earn seventy two thousand nine hundred you pay twelve thousand seven hundred and sixty dollars. That makes sense, right? So the formula works. The tax equals and and here's another way of doing it. And you might have you, you, I mean I'm just I'm just going through this because I want to really make this nice and clear for everybody. But the other way there's not, there's lots of ways. But the uh, another way is to say that if the tax if uh 
the tax equals 12,660 plus 25% of 25% of uh, taxable income over 72,500 or 25% of A you know I should I should have done X I should have done A well same thing right so you could say your T equals 12,660 plus 0 0.25 25% of 0 0.25 times A right so that's another way of getting the formula right and here of course we used X but A X you know same thing right so we here we said okay that equals T right